All right, welcome back everyone. This is part three, uh, hopefully the final part um, of uh, this uh, all day CDP access training seminar. We are gonna look at the functionality um, for the actual hearings, both the CAH and the PCH, and then we're gonna take a look at voting. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit off CDP access just because there's a few things that I think you're gonna wanna know. We are going to um, take a look at the ICC website a little bit just so that uh, give you the places so you can take a look and see if you are a validated voter. And um, there's a couple places in CDP Access, you can check that as well, but I wanna give you all the information, all the best places to look. Um, and then we'll come back and we'll actually do a little voting on the site here. Um, as you can see, I am still on the test site for obvious reasons. I don't have any kind of voting credentials to uh, the live site. Um, obviously, uh, we don't want ICC staff voting on this stuff. This is all up to you guys, the constituents. So I've got some test accounts that I'll be able to do a little voting with uh, here on the test server. Um, you're not gonna be able to follow along on the live site because that isn't quite live yet, um, but uh, you will be able to get a good sense of everything you're gonna wanna do uh, before, during, and after the hearings um, to complete your votes. So uh, brief discussion very quickly about who can vote, and I'll go ahead and jump over to uh, iccsafe.org, oh, wrong tab, here we go. So um, the individuals who can vote in the assembly motion votes, which are the ones that come right after the CAH when there's a motion from the floor, is ba are basically anyone who's got a membership that is in good standing with ICC. So it doesn't really matter what kind of member you are, if you're an individual member, if you're a corporate member and you're the representative of that corporate, or if you're one of the uh, validated governmental uh, voters, you'll also all be able to vote um, on the assembly motion votes. Uh, honorary members are also able to vote in the assembly motion votes. Um, if you, uh, when we're talking about the online governmental consensus vote, that's the one that comes from the public comment hearings and is the final vote that determines the, the final uh, 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 end result of all of this work um, and what actually makes it into the, um, the code books, you will only allow to vote if you are a uh, G1, G2, or G3, as we call them, a governmental member who has been validated for this current codes uh, group. Not the whole cycle, which is three years, but this year. Uh, you do need to make sure that your primary representative has revalidated you um, for the year each time. Those validations do need to happen 30 days before the hearings, and that's true both for the assembly motion vote and for the online uh, vote. So you've got a few days yet since the hearings uh, start October 20th or thereabouts this year. Um, you've got about a week and change to make sure that uh, you talk to your primary representative make sure that they have submitted their voter validations for this year and that you are on the list. Once your voter validations get processed, if you go to iccsafe.org slash myicc, you're gonna to have to be logged in. It'll prompt you to log in if you're not already. Uh, my account is pretty bare here, but you'll see that there's this membership button here, and this gives you all the information about your membership. That will tell you if your membership is valid, it'll tell you if you're paid up and in good standing, um, and then it will tell you if you have been assigned a voter validation status um, by the, the jurisdiction or the constituency that you're a part of. So you wanna take a look here, see and click on this membership button, see if you're a validated voter. You've got one other option, which is to go into CDP access. You've got this uh, little fella up here in the corner, you can click on my CDP. Uh, my CDP is a little bit of a, a, a how to and, uh, or excuse me, a, a what's what, uh, uh, how are you, who are you on the um, CDP access site. This will confirm you are who you are. It'll tell you whether you're eligible for assembly motions. It'll tell you whether you're eligible for the OGCV. Now do keep in mind, a lot of those voter validations don't get processed until after that 30 day mark. So if you do go in there today, you can go look on the live site. You can see if you're, um, you're eligible to vote. Um, you might wanna double check with your primary representative, see when they submitted um, the uh, voter validations. And if they haven't been processed yet, they haven't gotten that email back from ICC saying that your, your voters are validated for the year, that may just not be ready to go. Now, um, uh, if you do check uh, in a few days, once we're within that 30 day window and you're not eligible, um, and you think you should be, don't despair. It's possible that we'll, we have some little glitch or bug that um, is uh, causing your voter, to, voter validation to not show up. 
Um, sometimes you have multiple email addresses. If you've got jsmith at, you know, cityoftownsville.com, as well as jsmith at city.state.gov, um, you need to make sure that the correct email address is associated with your voter validation account. So we may need to go in there and uh, swap out your email address or merge a couple of accounts um, just to make sure that that's all uh, clear and that CDP understands you are who you are. Um, so I do definitely recommend going in and taking a look before you vote, checking in with your primary representative now to make sure that their voter validations are in and that you're all ready to go. So having said that, assuming that you are validated and eligible to vote, uh, we've got a couple of different pages. I'm going to log out as an admin here and make sure I am logged in as a regular user. Um, I'm going to log in as a non-voting user to start. If we've got some time, I'll log in as a, a voter account and we'll see that. But one thing I want to do as a non-voter is to show you guys just how transparent the process is. If for some reason there's, you know, more folks in your office than you guys have voting seats um, or you're just not going to be able to participate this year fully so you're not one of the validated voters, you're still going to be able to see all the results from the hearings. You're going to be able to see all the ballots exactly as the voters can see them. The only thing you can't do is vote. So you're going to be able to take a look at all the information. You're going to know exactly what the voters know, and that way you can be confident that the process is as clean and transparent as we want it to be. So as a regular user, um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, first take a look and show you what the results pages from the hearings look like. So when we leave the hearings, we do try to do real-time results throughout the hearing process, but once we leave the hearings, the staff works hard to cross-check the video, make sure that everything is, is uh, correct. We do publish those big PDFs that you're used to on iccsafe.org. You can always check the ROCA for the committee results, and you can check the unofficial final results for the PCH results. But if you want to take a peek here in CDP Access, we've got this uh, CAH results tab here. It's a real simple page. Just like all the other pages, it allows you to search, sort, and filter. So if you just want to look at, for instance, the plumbing, you can grab that plumbing code and it's going to pare it down to just the plumbing items. You can search by number so you can easily find a specific code change, and you can even search by part number. Again, if you want to see everything that a particular hearing committee did, regardless of what subject matter it is, you can instead or at the same time, you can uh, sort by hearing committee here too. And this download CSV button, download the spreadsheet of whatever you have searched sorted and filtered here and gives you all of them. So right now I've got all the plumbing code. If I were to download this, I'm going to get all the plumbing code results. If instead of this I want everything, but I only want to see, for instance, what, and I don't know which committees heard what this year, so forgive me if one of these comes up blank. Well, let's go back to plumbing again. If I want to see only the ones that the plumbing committee heard, you can see there's a couple of G proposals that the plumbing committee heard. This gives me the ability to download everything the plumbing committee did so I can make sure that I've got everything uh, in, uh, my, uh, in my pocket here that I need to handle the plumbing uh, work this year. So um, after the CAH, you're going to get this. You see the committee action. You see the floor motion. This doesn't give you the assembly motion results. This is just what happened at the hearing. So you'll, you'll be able to see these specific results and, uh, and keep track of your proposals there. We'll have the same thing for um, uh, uh, excuse me, we'll have the same thing for after the PCH. You'll be able to, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I can go right here and take care of this. If I take out that whole search. I can show you what it'll look like uh, when we're talking about the PCH, because of course there's just a little bit more data. So uh, again, you can search, sort, and filter by your agenda number. Uh, you can see the CAH results. If there was an assembly motion, you can see that. These now are because they're assembly motions, not floor motions. That means that these are successful assembly motions only. Um, so if something was moved, uh, then we can, uh, uh, if something was moved but failed, it won't show up in this. This is only showing the successful ones. The PCH action is the final action that was taken at the hearings. This is what's going to set the agenda for the online governmental consensus vote. So the online governmental consensus vote, for instance, in this case, since the PCH action was as submitted, the CAH result was disapproved, your uh, online governmental consensus vote ballot takes both of these into account and gives you the two options per uh, our committee, our council policy 28, the two options on the ballot that are correct. I believe in this case it is AS versus disapprove. So you'll get AS versus D on the ballot and you'll be able to choose one of them. 
This hearing vote results column, um, you may or may not know, we have a all new uh, ICC voting system, uh, smarter than the smart clickers uh, that we used to use previously. We're able to uh, have you log in as a validated voter. The voting screens are much uh, clearer. There are no more, am I pushing button number one or button number two? It now says support or oppose right on it. Uh, and you can go through your results on that device and you can see historically how you voted while you're sitting at the hearings. That will automatically transfer over to CDP access and you'll also be able to see what you voted um, and what collectively everyone voted at the hearings um, on this screen. So once we've got that voting data, You'll see there, you know, the motion was as submitted, support was 51%, opposed was 49%, so the final TCH action was AS. Then you'll see over here we've got the OGCV results. Obviously we haven't held an OGCV, um, but based on uh, the uh, uh, support and oppose, you'll be able to um, see the hearing vote will be automatically moved over to the OGCV. So if you voted at the hearing, you'll automatically be voting on the OGCV. Um, and if you've changed your OGCV vote online or if you have uh, voted on some items you weren't able to uh, get to at the hearings, that'll also be incorporated into that OGCV vote. So really the final vote here is your hearing votes, all your clicker data, plus what you did online and that will equal the final uh, result. Everybody does get one and only one vote, so if you change your vote in the online governmental consensus vote, your hearing vote, you, you, you're modifying it rather than adding an additional vote. So if you voted opposed at the hearings, you vote support on the OGCV, you're only registering in the end one support vote. Some of this math is a little complicated to see on this page, I know. When we uh, get to the actual ballot, I think all will become clear. But I did want to show you the complete reporting out from both the uh, CAH and the PCH. Um, the other item that I want to show you real quick is this consent agenda listing. Now, any proposal coming out of the CAH that does have uh, um, did get uh, through the CAH, does have a committee ruling on it, but did not get an assembly motion and did not get any public comments, is considered to be on the consent agenda. We move the consent agenda at the very beginning of the hearings. You're going to uh, see that all of these uh, committee actions are now considered the final action. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, in this case, uh, we, we don't have any of this PCH data because we know that uh, if there's no public comments, we assume that everybody approves of what the committee did. And in these cases, for instance, E5 will be approved as submitted into um, the code books. All right. Um, so let's go into what happens right after the PCH when you get that notification that says the OGCV vote is open. I'll be able to go into current cycle. I'll see this OGCV listing. Obviously, OGCV results will not be open at the same time. This is just the test server, so we've got all the different pieces open and in place. And every proposal that has a PCH action on it will be available here. Again, you can search by subject matter. Again, you can search by agenda number. So if you're looking for a specific item, you can filter down to it real easy and find it. Now, uh, I've only got a few of them set up in the test server here, but this will be a pretty long list, um, and you, it will page through one at a time, so you'll have about 20 uh, results on a page. Um, they will be in alphabetical order by agenda number, so if you just want to go through everything, you'll be able to do that pretty easy. I've got E1-18 Part 1. If I'm ready to vote on it, I can go ahead and hit View Ballot. So this is all the data that you've got for this particular ballot. The PCH results tab really gives you pretty close to everything you need to vote on these, especially if you went to the hearings and you've already heard all the testimony. You're gonna see the CAH result, it was disapproved. If there's an assembly motion vote, you'll see the vote there and, and what happened there. And then here I've got the PCH result and I'll also see the aggregate data from the voting system if that's available. Underneath it, I'm gonna see a version of the proposal. This version of the proposal is exactly what you are voting on. So in this case, it's as submitted. This is the original CAH agenda version. If the motion instead was 
um, the uh, as modified by a particular public comment. ICC staff will take that public comment, it will incorporate the information into the proposal, and on this PCH result tab, you're gonna see exactly what you expect to see um, in the code book, assuming that this gets through. Another one to show you here, if the PCH action is disapproved, let's look at E2 here. That means that you're voting on disapprove and assuming disapprove gets through the process. That means there's no change to the code. So you're seeing no uh, text there. It's very clear that if this gets through with disapprove, this is what you're voting on. Now in each case, you also have the ability to look at the original proposal. This is the original CAH version. This is what was published as we were going into the first hearing. Um, if you uh, want to be able to grab this, print it, you can always go to iccsafe.org and download that big PDF and grab that. We've also got the ROCA available here. So again, this is the information coming out of the committee action hearing. Here's what the committee did and why. So since the motion on this one, uh, oh, wrong one, let's go to the disapprove. Since the motion on this one is, is disapprove, you may wanna get a good sense of what the committee thinks is wrong, why they think that this shouldn't go through. Um, so you're gonna wanna review that ROCA information. The public comments tab is not just the public comment, it is the entire proposal and its public comments as published in the public comment agenda. So if there are committee modifications, this is the place that you can see the proposal with those committee modifications worked in. Um, if there's any other uh, errata or anything like that that uh, appeared between the CAH and the PCH, this is where that will also be worked into the proposal and it'll be declared in the errata uh, part of the proposal here. So you can skim through, you can see this whole proposal, reason statement, and then here's the public hearing results. You've got the ROCA again, and then here's the individual, individual consideration agenda with all the public comments in place. So again, all of it is here ready to go. If you're more of a print person, you want to be able to print that out, you can always go to iccsafe.org, download that full PCH agenda, and you've got everything available to you there. But this data is exactly the same as what's in that PDF. Now the last item that you've got available here are the videos. I think E1, we've got the videos in place for you. We do. So we're going to uh, upload all the videos for you. Um, you're gonna be able to see this proposal from the committee action hearings. You'll see this proposal from the public comment hearings, and they'll be just like this, clearly labeled which is which. All you have to do is click on it. Oh, that was pretty loud, sorry about that. You'll be able to see the, the whole, um, the whole uh, committee hearing if you want to. Um, this does stream, um, it's not available for download, so you will have to be online in order to review these videos. Um, but if you're, you're here voting anyway, we assume that you're online. Um, now, one thing I do want to show you, um, if you want to review something before we vote, you know, we've got about a week to two weeks in between the public comment uh, hearings and the OGCV opening. You want to take a look at, let's say, how you did, how the testimony went. Um, we have a site, it's pretty new this year. It's a free ICC benefit, not just to membership, but to everyone who participates in the code change uh, process and really all the public out there too. It is hearingvideos.iccsafe.org. And this is linked to off of uh, CDP access, it's linked to off of iccsafe.org. It's pretty easy to find uh, if you're looking for it. And this allows you to see all of the videos from all of the hearings that we've got available. So if I hit search videos up here, I can go back through time. You can see we've got back to group A 2015, we've got group B 2016, and then we've got the Group A 2018 that we're just working through right now. Um, just like I said before with, the, um, uh, with CDP access, we don't have any intention of taking any of this down. So as we go forward through the years, you're going to find uh, more and more data out here, more and more information out here. Um, we're always gonna try and keep a clear, transparent record of what happened at the hearings um, and how these uh, code changes have sort of evolved the code books through time. Um, do note that it's gonna show one hearing at a time. So right now I'm showing the CAH. If I wanna see the PCH, I have to click through to that. And it'll only show the video when I hit refresh. It'll only show the items that have uh, videos. Obviously we haven't had the PCH yet this year, so there's none available. Let's go back in time here to group B. There we go, now we can see the, the, only the items that have PCH videos on them.
So this is a pretty great brand new member benefit, um, definitely worth it. Again, it's hearing videos, plural, dot ICCSafe.org. Um, I really recommend you bookmark it if you ever want to review any information. If you submitted your first code change and you want to see how the testimony works, um, if you want to review, you know, you went to the CAH, didn't go so well with the committee, you want to really come out strong for the PCH, um, this is a great way to review what happened uh, at the hearings and uh, move forward from there. All right, so let's go back to the ballots here. So I've reviewed my videos. I've reviewed all the information I want. Again, here's what's going to be in the code uh, books as soon as it, uh, as soon as assuming it gets approved. Here's the original proposal. Here's the information of what happened at the first hearing. Here's the information about what's happening at the second hearing. And here's the actual hearings themselves. Now I can come over to this right-hand column, and this is where uh, the voters versus the non-voters um, are going to see a little bit of a, of a difference. Um, as you can see here, I can, even as a non-voter, I can click between these. Um, I am going to need my PIN in order to vote. If you don't know your CDP access PIN, I really recommend that you reset it now. If you go to either the front of cdpaccess.com or iccsafe.org and you go to reset your password, it will ask you for a PIN at the same time. So you can reset your password to the exact same thing. It's not going to make you actually change your password, and you'll, but you'll be able to reset your PIN at the exact same time. And that's going to give you a four-digit PIN you need in order to vote. Um, we do have auditors that go through these votes at the end of the year, and they require us to do this two-factor authentication. Um, just to make sure if you stay logged into CDP Access, you get up, head to lunch, anything like that, um, nobody can sit down at your desk and uh, go ahead and start voting on your behalf. So you will need your PIN. Um, you're able to set a PIN whether or not you're a, voted, a validated voter or not right now. So even if your voter validation hasn't been approved yet, go ahead and uh, go to the forgot password link, set your password the same, reset your PIN, and write that down. You're going to need it for the voting system at the hearings, as well as the, uh, the online governmental consensus vote afterwards. Once you've entered your PIN and it's confirmed, you're going to get a rolling 20 minutes where you don't have to enter that PIN a second time. So it's a real short time. We don't want to totally log you out of CDP access after 20 minutes, but we do want to make sure that that PIN has to be re-entered. As long as you continue to be active and continue to vote, um, that 20 minutes will reset. So if you're going to settle in, you're going to do two hours, you've blocked out your afternoon, you're going to vote, you're probably only going to have to enter that PIN once. We don't want to hassle you. But if you do get up, you're out of, out of pocket for 15, 20 minutes, um, you're going to have to enter that PIN again uh, just to confirm you're you. If I was a validated voter, I'd see a button right here that says um, vote. It's big, it's green, it's easy to, to click. Um, and once you've registered your vote and you've got your correct PIN in there, it'll light up ready to go. Um, if you see that you are not a currently validated voter, you can absolutely email cdpaccess at iccsafe.org. Um, there's a good chance that, as we mentioned before, there's just some sort of glitch in the system. We've got a mismatch with the email address. Um, in fact, you can see here this email address is not associated with a validated voter. If you know you're a validated voter and you're getting this message, there's a good chance that the primary representative who validated you, just use the wrong email address on the form. Um, CDP Access only understands one email address per person, and uh, we can absolutely get that reset for you so that the right email address is associated with the right validation, uh, voter validation. Um, there is a chance sometimes that uh, you're not going to be validated because you didn't get revalidated for this year. Um, every once in a while we do have a few folks who were validated last year, assume they're going to be validated again this year, and don't check in with their primary representative and it doesn't happen for them. Either their primary representative just slips their mind or validate someone else for the year um, for whatever reason. So again, I, in, I strongly recommend you guys check in with your primary representative and make sure that you're the validated voter and that you know what email address they sent in when they asked for you to be validated. Um, you'll see different error messages depending on what it is. We try to be very clear about why you're not validated. You can always contact us. There's always an off chance there's a, a bug or another hiccup and that will uh, be able to clear up your validation. So definitely don't give up if you see an error message. Reach out to us. We'll be glad to help you. 
We've got a voting instructions uh, button right here, just in case you forget any of this. In fact, this recording will probably be on the page that this is linked from. Um, we do have a, a full uh, set of walkthroughs. It'll clarify exactly what is on each individual tab. It'll take you out to that hearing video site in case you want to review more videos. Um, it will uh, walk you through all of this process so that voting instructions is always, is always right there, uh, ready to help you out. Return to vote listing pretty much does what it says in the tin. It'll take you back to that link. Now, we do have these set up, so as you can see, they pop open a new one automatically. So when you're done voting, if you just want to close that tab, sorry, uh, getting in the way here with, uh, with WebEx. If you just want to close that tab, it's going to take you back to the OGCV listing. Um, so you don't necessarily have to click that button, but if for some reason you've closed the listing and you want to get back to it, you can always return to the vote listing. You can see these important documents. This is our test site, so you'll have to apologize for, I have to apologize for some of these. Um, but they are, uh, these will become the important documents um, once they are ready. We'll give you the PCH unofficial results, obviously. We'll give you another link to CP28 if you're wondering why these majorities are set the way they are, or if you are wondering why, based on the motion at PCH, why these options are the way they are. All that information is in, uh, good uh, tables and uh, reasonably easy to read format um, out in CP28, so you'll be able to review that. We'll also link to the Code of Honor, any other webinars or videos that we hold, any news articles about dates and times and when you can vote. All that will go in that important links list there. I'd always be right at your fingertips. There's also a couple other uh, items, just in case uh, we know sometimes in the hearings, different proposals can be interconnected in different ways. So we want to make sure that you find it easy to find information. Let's say, for instance, that E1 and E2, for whatever reason, the content is similar enough that during the E1 discussion, E2 comes up, vice versa. Um, we want to make that easy for you. So this videos tab will definitely have, in this case, E1 and E2 videos available for the CAH and the PCH. I'm sorry, it'll have two, two E1 videos for the CAH and the PCH here. But if E2 was also discussed, we may include the E2 videos here as well to make it easy for, uh, for you to access that information. We want to make it uh, as clear as possible for anyone who hasn't been to the hearings exactly what went on in the hearings, what's relevant, what's helpful. So uh, if you see more than two videos here, make sure to double check these uh, captions underneath. Uh, make sure that you watch the videos certainly for this particular item, but anything else that is included on this videos tab, you can definitely consider it important. Also, right above this important documents link, if they're available, you may have a list of related ballots. For instance, parted proposals will likely have, you know, if you've got a four-part proposal and you're looking at part one, we'll have part two, three, and four right in the listing in the sidebar here. So you can open them in new tabs, flip between them, or just so that you can vote on each one in sequence and walk through them really easily without going back to the listing. Um, anything that the staff thinks is useful for you to have as a related ballot, we will set that up. So as you're voting, keep an eye out for those related ballots just to make sure you have all the information you need um, and that any related information uh, is out there and conveyed to you. Now one more item here just to go out to the listing. As I am a non-voter here, um, I don't see any, you see there's this big gap of white space here. I'm just seeing the results and I've got the ability to view the ballot. As you can tell, I can view absolutely everything. Um, I can, the, all I can't do is vote. In this big white space here, there's also going to be a chance for bulk voting. That means that you should be able to see the options that are available to that uh, particular item. So in this case, you know, E1 part one was as submitted versus disapproved. I should have the ability to choose between the two of them right here. So as a voter, I'll have that bulk voting option available. And if you have been paying attention at the hearings, you watched the live stream from your office, you're ready to vote. If you've just got a list and you want to run down that list, E1 as submitted, E2 disapprove, E3 as modified, um, you're going to be able to vote right here and you won't have to open the ballot, vote, close the page, open the ballot, you know, you can vote for them all right here and you can certainly always review all of your information uh, right here on the OGCV listing page. 
Now for this particular listing, while you're voting, you don't have any way to download your results. You're only going to be able to view them in CDP Access. You can always hit print on each individual page. Um, but during, while the vote is open, we don't offer a download just because we don't want people to download a couple of documents right in the middle and then not necessarily know which one of their votes is the right one, which is the latest one. Um, once we close the vote and we're tabulating the results, again over on this uh, helpful little fellow up here on your MyCDP page, you're going to see um, right now you've just got these profile settings. We're going to have another one right here underneath your name and it's going to say vote results. You're going to be able to take a look at your own votes, you're going to be able to download your own votes, and not only that, you're going to be able to do it in uh, co uh, connection or with the completely correlated votes or the concatenated votes. So you'll be able to see, for instance, uh, the motion was as submitted, I voted as submitted, but overall disapprove won 66 to uh, 44 votes. Once you've got that uh, data, um, you can uh, download it, save it, store it, and again, we're never going to delete that. It's never going to go away. So starting now into the future, you'll always be able to review your votes. Um, we do not release your votes in any way, shape, or form. In fact, as a user, I can't even tell uh, who voted what and where and when. Uh, we don't have any access to that. All I can see are those concatenated results. There is one exception to that. If you are the primary voter and you would like to see how many items your individual voters uh, voted on, just as a review to make sure that your, your voters are actually uh, jumping in and, and doing some work there, um, you can contact us. We will confirm that you are the primary voter and we'll tell you how many ballots each one of your individual voters uh, did register. Um, we don't release what they voted, but we will say, you know, uh, John Smith did vote on, out of 250 potential ballots, John Smith voted on 230 of them. And that way you'll, you'll be able to receive some of that information um, and just sort of review uh, your voters again for future years. Other than that, none of this information is accessible by ICC staff, so if you want to see your own vote record, you will need to go to this My ICC page, and when that's available after the OGCV, you'll want to download it from there. <clears throat> All right, so um, that is the OGCV uh, ballot. Uh, the assembly motion ballot is very, very similar. It lacks a couple of the tabs um, for obvious reasons. We don't have, for instance, uh, all of the uh, public comments ready for the assembly motion, but you're going you're gonna to go to that same type of ballot page. You're going to see that exact um, type of, uh, um, uh, in that case, it will be support or oppose as opposed to the motion, um, and you'll be able to register your vote that way. Um, now, uh, as I showed you the OGCV votes, I want to show you both sides a little bit. So uh, for the results, the actual results that you'll see, I'm going to show you the assembly motion votes. Um, just do know that when it comes to the OGCV results, of course, you'll have those couple extra columns of the PCH data. So when we have those uh, results available, here's what you're going to be looking at. You'll be able to see the agenda number. Again, you'll be able to search, sort, and filter. So you'll be able to uh, download just the results you care about. If you're focused on plumbing, if you're focused on electrical, you can download just those items um, and uh, you'll, uh, you'll be able to store them that way. Um, you can always click on the agenda number. It's going to take you out to the proposal and you can review the proposal. Um, it will show you whatever versions are relevant at that time. So at the assembly motion, we may only have the CAH agenda version. Once we get to the OGCV, you'll be able to review that version. You'll be able to re review the committee modification version if it exists. And you'll be able to review the um, online uh, governmental vote uh, version with the public comments incorporated if that's relevant. You'll be able to see the committee action. Here's the actual motion. Um, and then you'll be able to see your vote. Unfortunately, I'm not a voter, so I don't have that available. And then the final result. So you'll have everything in context. You'll see, again, I have this download CSV button, so I can download a spreadsheet. If you want to do a, a little bit of, a few calculations, a little bit of math on this, or you just want to hand this off to any other governing bodies that uh, want to review what's uh, being done over the course of the year, um, that is going to be available to you. Whatever you've got this 
set to search, sort, and filter for, that's the results that you're gonna get. So right now I've got no filter set, I'm gonna be able to download everything. If I only, if I search for the only the plumbing ones, I would download only the plumbing ones um, so that uh, you can get different documents for uh, different subject matters Make that to make that a little bit easier for you. Um, we do have, uh, we will have this available, this assembly motion result listing available uh, at the PCH. Um, I've heard from a few people that uh, they would like a full uh, version of this um, so that they can track all the proposals going through the PCH. Um, unfortunately, they, they shared that too late. We're not gonna have time for it this year, but in the future, you're gonna be able to download a sheet like this, even if there, something didn't have an assembly motion, um, and then you'll have a full uh, spreadsheet that you'll be able to use to track all of the PCH results as they come in. Um, so do know that's coming for the future, um, but we did just get it a little bit too late uh, to, uh, to get that, that information in. So um, I've got a couple more little items that I want to share with you that are sort of outside the scope of, the, of what I just talked about, but I do want to pause just for half a second, um, both to catch my breath um, and to let you guys type any questions that you might have about voter validation, about uh, the listings, about the ballots, um, anything like that that we've gone over in about the, the last uh, about 40 minutes. Um, if you want to ask any questions, uh, go ahead and do that. Um, I'm just going to mute my Myself for two minutes, uh, probably less, and uh, let you type those. If I don't hear any, I'll keep moving forward and uh, show you these couple extra items. All right, I'm not seeing any typing, so I'll go ahead and keep moving forward. Um, I, as I, I mentioned, make sure that uh, you take a look at the hearing videos uh, page. But what I'd really like to share with you right now, um, just a little bit of a preview, um, is where this work goes once we've gotten this all approved. Now, uh, you may or may not use public or premium access. We are consolidating everything to a site called codes.iccsafe.org. You'll be able to uh, register and view uh, all of the code books. Uh, you'll uh, be able to use your MyICC username and password to sign in. Um, but what I really want to show you, um, this is supposed to premiere in Richmond in about a month, but we're going to give you a sneak preview of it, is the new and improved uh, MyICC, or excuse me, the new and improved pre uh, codes.iccsafe.org. Um, I believe I just switched to the presentation here. Um, CodesICCSafe.org is the full online digital library. Um, so uh, all of the code books, all of the, um, the iCodes are available through both, uh, public and premium. Premium has got a lot more uh, features, gives you the ability to insert annotations and highlights into the text, to bookmark things that you use frequently, to export some of the content, so the, or even print individual sections. So you've got, got it on paper. We know some of those work sites don't have the best connection to the outside world. Um, so with a premium account, you can download some of that and get you some online, con or excuse me, some offline content. Um, and even access some supplemental content like the interps and the errata already tagged right in line with the code books. So no more searching the errata central just to see if there's uh, something uh, new for the code section you're working on. When you open up the code book, if there's errata, it's going to be tagged right there and you're not going to have to go hunting for it. You'll be able to click on it and review it right there. Um, it is, uh, I, I, I apologize for the brief sales pitch here, but we, we do now have a new model that we're hoping is gonna fit a lot better with some jurisdictions. One, uh, one year, three year durations are available, but we also have uh, monthly 
auto recurring uh, subscriptions. So if you only need it during certain times of year, you've got a busy season when you want to have premium available, or you only need it available during the code change process because you want to be able to review all the code books, not just the ones on your shelf during that time, um, you can uh, uh, pick up those uh, monthly uh, subscriptions and small and medium sized businesses can either buy a single license to share across the team um, or they can uh, uh, buy a number of, of shorter term licenses um, and, and it's a very cost effective way to, to do it. Um, we are in this final stage of relaunch, as I mentioned. If you're going to be available at the Richmond hearings, we definitely recommend you come in a couple of days um, before the hearing and uh, at the expo and uh, stop by our booth in the expo. You're going to uh, be able to see um, the new and improved codes at ICCSafe.org. So I like the, you saw the website I showed you before, this new clean streamlined version um, is a lot more tablet compatible. It's a lot more um, uh, mobile device compatible. Um, and uh, it, it allows you to uh, access not only the books that you have already purchased, but it also allows you to access the public versions of any other books that are in our library. Um, so if you're uh, away from home, need a different book, or even just uh, want to see how uh, the other guys do it, um, you're going to be able to access all of that uh, simple, quick, easy from the comfort of, uh, of your tablet there. So I definitely recommend you go to codes.iccsafe.org. You can register for a free account, or if you've got my ICC account, you can log right in. There's trials for some of uh, the premium uh, uh, features, and um, otherwise you can uh, even just pick up one month of some of the features, try it out, um, and uh, see if you uh, um, are interested. Um, if you stop by the uh, expo booth, uh, you'll want to say hi to Dan. He's my partner in crime in the office right behind me here. Um, as, as I handle the code changes coming in, he handles uh, public access, access coming out. If you've got any kind of technical questions, feature requests, anything you'd like to see about the future of digital code uh, development and distribution, we'd really love to hear them. Um, we're moving forward and uh, we're into the 21st century now and uh, moving even further out, uh, trying to get ahead of the curve a little bit. Um, so uh, any thoughts that you've got, if you'd like to try out the new um, codes at iccsafe.org, he'll have some uh, uh, machines available so you can and sit down and take a peek at it as well. Um, so that's uh, really all I have there. I wanted to make sure to take you all the way through the whole process. So we've gone through, um, actually let me flip back to my help screen page here. We've gone through uh, proposal creation and submission, uh, modifying those proposals through online modifications at the CAH or public comments in between the two hearings. We've taken a look at all the voting listings, so you can uh, find the listing for assembly motion votes and vote there, find the listing for online governmental consensus votes and vote there. Um, and uh, we've taken you through the uh, result screens, which will be available once the votes are closed, and uh, my CDP, which will let you not only see what you've done this year once the votes are closed, but as we move forward, it'll let you walk back in time, see what happened in previous years, um, and uh, download all of those results to share with folks in your office, um, folks in other offices uh, as, you, as you like. So I do build in some time for questions here, but you guys have uh, not had a lot, so we're a little earlier on the time again than I thought we would be. I usually get at least one or two uh, questions in there. Um, so if uh, you've got any other questions, I'm happy to, to stick around and answer them. Um, but otherwise, uh, this is the end of my presentation. Um, as mentioned before, I'm, I am Lori. I am technical service uh, and, and here to help you out with anything CDP access related. Um, but if you have questions about any of the code change process, email cdpaccess at iccsafe.org, and we got a whole team of folks here all over this building uh, ready to help you out. So any questions, uh, thoughts, concerns, anything else that I can, I can help you out with? Uh, I'll bring up chat again. I think it disappeared on me, one sec. There we go. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in. Otherwise, um, we can stop the recording and we'll, we'll uh, take this off uh, from there.